Hi guys, this is Michael Mori here from Mori Stock Dogs and as I have promised for you guys before we will start a series with the video of videos with training tips but first of all I want to apologize myself for my bad English I'm a Brazilian guy and I just arrived here about two years ago and I'm trying to make my English better but yeah that's what I got and so we will be here now showing you a lot of stats about dogs and first of all I want to introduce my friend here Brandon that is a a green guy when it comes to stock dogs and I think he will have a lot of questions that you guys might have and I think it would be nice to have him asking questions some things might sound normal to me and I might don't have that in mind uh, but for a guy that's just starting, that question might be uh, uh, needed to be asked. Hello, my name is Brandon Pugh, and I recently purchased a dog from Morris Dog Dogs. And I'm green as, as they come as far as a Border Collie stock dog. I've had blue laces, um, I've had hog dogs in the past, but putting a handle on, on a Border Collie I have no clue, so I've been asking a lot of questions from Macon here, so that's why I'm here at Macon Stuff Dogs. So yes, uh, I think it's we need to go through a lot of things before we start to put videos out there, because you guys got to understand what we're doing uh, from the base. It's just like when I train the dogs, I go from the base, I just don't throw it in the middle of everything. So. First of all, it's pretty important that you guys know your dogs, that you know what kind of dog you're working with and how much that dog can take. So creating a relationship with your dog, uh, building up a bond, it's really important uh, in order to start to train your dogs. Train your dog is not just take a dog and go to cattle or sheep or whatever stock you're trying to to work with. Train your dog start uh, when you walk when you walk your dog every day, when you feed your dog every day, when you're Goose. taking care of your kennel, it's obedience. Goose. Everything is about training. It's not just Goose. stock. So it's pretty important that you do the base first. So Joker. There's a lot of ways of training dog dogs and what i'm gonna be showing you guys from this video forward it's my way of training dogs so i'm not saying that all other ways are wrong i'm saying i i, I want to show you guys how i the train dogs so there's many ways and that will be mine so first of all you gotta start from the beginning correctly and the beginning is how, well Whenever you get your dog, if you get a third days old, if you get a five months, six months old, whatever you do with that dog, you gotta start correct from the beginning. And the beginning for me is an obedience. I would like to have a dog um, starting to come here, lie down, stay before I even go to stock. So if I have a pup that I bred, I will have that pup at three months old doing all of that already out of stock and just enjoying the training having fun i use hot dog uh, to uh, reward that dog for what he's doing so this dog should enjoy the training from day one rather he, whether he's uh, working with stock or out of stock that dog should be enjoying it it's just like a kid uh, you cannot push more than he should, that more than you can, and you don't expect more than the dog can is ready to do. So it's pretty important. There's a simple rules. You gotta have patience, and you cannot push your dog more than he's ready for. If you follow that rules, you're gonna have a pretty good dog. So I will. I would like to uh, Brandon to throw us some questions and, and see. You know, since you got it, since you're starting just now, and what's your first questions? What you 
What were, was your first, uh, most uh, difficult? What was the difficulty you, you faced when you uh, dive into the border collie world? <clears throat> it's kind of, I think for for me, it's kind of where do you start? You know, where where do I start with the dog? And for one thing, you know, like you you mentioned, um, not more than he can handle. How do I know um, when my dog, when I'm putting too much on my dog, or not enough uh, from my dog? You know, because he's already started. But how do I know if I'm putting loading him down with too much? Yeah. So as I said, the first thing you should know is know your dog. Yeah. First of all, you need to know your dog very well. You need to have a relationship with that dog, and when you have that then you will know how much your dog can take because you as i said it's got to be fun it's got to be nice your dog will enjoy it and you're going to just understand what that when that dog is not enjoying it. you understand if you have a pup uh, uh, how mentally prepared that pup is to get himself into different kind of situations so uh, i will always start with sheep right with really broke sheep and whatever is a cattle dog or a sheep dog I will only start with sheep because sheep they will give me opportunity and time to fix any situation and if my dog do wrong he won't get punished but if he do something wrong with the cattle he gonna get punished and kicked and all of that so I will start with sheep first pretty broken sheep start to go around nice kill your dog see what his natural builds and see what are his issues. Every dog have an issue, whether it's uh, a wake and by or lie down or walk up the sheep. That does not mean that your dog is not good because he's not good on, a, on one uh, exercise or because he's not good in one direction. That's just an issue that dog gonna have that you as a trainer or handler will need to find a smart way to overcome it. Okay, <clears throat> so talking about direction, how do I show my dog away and come by so you don't sh it, it's like this you you start all on the round pen which we're gonna have videos out of that very soon and most of the dogs want to go hunt the sheep attack the sheep and and some dogs are pretty natural and they are right going around the sheep so you use the situation when that dogs are moving around the sheep and start to put the commands on the movement okay. so some dogs need a little more pressure to move around some dogs just do that normal so there is a, a, a you got to be positioned correct there's a lot of body position you position yourself between the sheep and the dog so you are in a situation to protect the herd at all the time and you're going to keep following the dog i used to say you stay on the shoulder so the dog opens so you want to keep the, that dog in a good uh, distance with the herd there's two things that I used to say there is a pressure zone and there is a comfort zone the dog should work on a comfort zone which is in a good distance from the sheep each dog have their own comfort zone there are some dogs that put more pressure on sheep there are some dogs that put less pressure there's some dogs have more eyes there's dogs that have less so First of all, you're going to need to understand what's pressure zone and comfort zone. Comfort zone is where your dog should do the movements without affect the sheep behavior. When you allow your dog to come into the pressure zone is where the sheep should be moving. Okay. So when your dog, are move, when your dog is moving flanks or he's running around the sheep, he should be running on the comfort zone. Okay. So that's a pretty important thing to learn. <clears throat> so... We worked a couple dogs last night. I brought my dog down and we ran him. And then I noticed from my dog to other dogs that you've been training longer is my dog tried to, he, he, he ran a tighter circle. How do I get my dog to, to go out, <clears throat> to, to run a further circle away yes. from me? So there's dogs that naturally like to go out and there's dogs that want to be very tight. Your dog is one of those who like to be very tight. And on the first days, on the beginning, I would just use, I would allow him to do a little of that. We want to push him so hard. Mm -hmm. But uh, as the training goes on, then we, as I said before, if you know your dog, yeah. you know what kind of pressure he can take. So you know if I would need to have a bottle 
with the stones on just to make sound and kick okay. that dog away. I, I, maybe you're gonna just use a voice command, ah, or go back. Okay. Maybe you're gonna need to have a, 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 a horse whip and whip on the ground, or make some dogs need a piece of rope and you spin it on the air, makes a sound, and that dog will go away. So it's, diff it's different ways for different dogs. So there's dogs that won't like to be trained if you have a whip on your hand, they won't feel comfortable with that in the beginning. Might accept on the end, but not on the beginning. And there's dogs that will will accept that. So all comes to know your dog first. Okay. So I know your dog, right? Right. right. So your dog is a, is a tough dog. You will need to use a bit of more pressure with him. So I would have, I would have with your dog a whip with a flag on the end of it and scare him out with sound and flag and push him out away and go back and by and go back and make him understand. As they understand the exercise pretty fast, they start to develop. So each dog will require a different technique. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So um, I've kind of the come by away, go back. <clears throat> so I've talked to you about, you know, maybe purchasing another pup mm -hmm. and we talked about relationship and, and obedience. Once I have obedience down, when when would I put? When do you think I should put my a, a new pup that I purchased on sheep? How old do you think? So I would do that in, a, in a, about four months old. Four months old. But the sheep gotta be correct. Okay. So here home I have different level of sheep. I have three levels of levels of sheep. I have the round pen sheep that's pretty broke. They know what to do. If you, they, they will respect the dog. They will never fight a pup. And that's the sheep for a pup and sheep for young dogs. And I have a little a faster sheep that's moving more fast, that they still broke, but they, they're moving more freely. That's for a dog that's the next level when we move out of the round pen. And then I have the pretty fresh sheep. They are, they know dog, but they're not very used. So they're pretty fast. If the dog don't know what they're doing, if the dog make a mistake, he gonna lose that sheep. But I need that kind of sheep to cheat the dog how to work properly. So there's different type of sheep, different kind of sheep for different levels of dog. It's very important that you start everything on a level one. Your pup, you have a level one sheep with a round pen sheep, easy sheep. I will respect your dog. So I guess it's all about confidence. Yes, you <laughs> gotta have you gotta build confidence at all times. So I'm always building my dog's confidence. If if I feel like him, put then I need to bring him back. To yes. <clears throat> now I've noticed on, uh, like we went you we went and get caught the sheep and brought them in last night. And how, I guess is it called an outrun? Mm -hmm. How do you get the dog? Because I know in the round pen you can pressure him you know, out to the wall. Mm -hmm. But how do I get my dog to do a further outrun to and further and further? Because I've noticed some people, I've been looking online and how some people, they talk about doing an outrun. How do I get my dog to do a further outrun to, to go around? So I'm starting the, round, the, the, the outrun since the day one I'm training the dogs on the round pen. It's just that the round, uh, outrun on the round pen is just very little, but that's an outrun. Okay. And so when my dog is ready to go out of the round pen, he's already having a small outrun. So what I do, I just increase the size okay. of this run, increase the distance, but it's low and, and, and uh, graduated. So okay. I'm gonna place myself the same as I start the round pen. I am the training dog and sheep, so I control the situation and I can protect the sheep. And the, I will send my dog to a run. When he's doing that correct, he's doing that, he's doing his movements with relaxation. That, that's when that dog is ready to go a step forward with I give him more space and more space, but I will be always in the middle until I see that that dog is doing correct. So I lie down my dog, make him stay, go to the middle, push the sheep further, and send the dog with the direction he likes. I will always work first the direction the dog likes. Okay. When he's doing fun with that direction, and then I will move on to a next direction that he don't like. 
because we don't want to start a new exercise with having a fight, right? Sure. So slowly, we're going to increase the distance. And slowly, I'm going to decrease the distance between me and dog. So I, in, it will come a day that I'm near to the dog and send him from my feet. But it's pretty important that you start it protecting the sheep. You're more near than the sh to the sheep than your dog is. Okay. <clears throat> Another thing, um, we were, we went out and, uh, so me as a green handler, um, I guess everybody watching this video will be a different, but as a green handler, what is the best way for me to learn positioning of my dog? Um, as, for instance, we, we went and you and I pushed some sheep into a crowd today and I pushed, I, I felt like I was putting enough pressure on the sheep, but I actually turned them back into you. What's the best way for me to learn positioning so that whenever I start using my dog to position my dog right, so I'm not pushing my dog sheep in the wrong direction? So that's a very important thing to, to, to mention. Before you start to train a dog, before you start to handle a dog, you first must know how to handle stock yourself. Stock sense, that uh, is a very important thing. Because you, go, you will be trying to put that dog in a position that if there were no dog, you're going to need to be there with the horse or yourself, if you want food or whatever. But it's really important that you learn stock sense. If you're a new guy, if you're starting now, if you have never have a, a knowledge with stock, before you even try to train your dog, train yourself to understand to move that sheep properly. You go there, just move a sheep or, or cattle or whatever it is in a round pen or in the arena or in the pasture or whatever uh, uh, facility you have, try to understand to move that sheep or, or that cattle, move them around and you feel, oh, I pass too much, I, if I beat you backwards, I'm, I'm, they, are, they are winning over me, or if I go too near, there's too much pressure, you're gonna have a stock sense. Once you have that, then you're gonna know where to place your dog on, on the best uh, uh, positions. So we've talked about working sheep and we start on the sheep um, at about four months old, but all that, I have cattle and I want my dog to be a cattle dog. When do I start my dog on cattle and do I just put him on cattle being that he knows direction and all that or do I start slow? Uh, uh, what, how, how do I do that? Yeah, again, there's many ways of training. I want to do it differently than I normally do, which is, I start my dogs all on sheep. When my dogs have sense, are calm, they know what they're doing, they're enjoying the training, they're mentally prepared, their teeth are strong enough, they're full grown teeth, then I'm gonna put them on, on cattle. Then I will use small steers, okay. pretty uh, nice steers, calm, uh, if the steers are mean or, or something like that, then I'm going to, need to protect my dog because, as I said, we always want them with the positive experience. Right. Can be the toughest, the toughest dog, or can be the 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 uh, uh, a, a weakest dog. No matter how the dog behaves, we want them to have good experience, or we can work with that. So, I I do not I do not put my dogs on cattle without a leash. First thing, I will teach my dog to bite heel and to bite the correct heel. There's not, there's not that many people out there that understand that there is the correct heel to bite. Okay. And we will be showing that later on. With the correct leg, you know, when the leg is, is stretching out, what the leg should bite, you know? So there's the correct leg to bite, there's the correct height to bite. Right. And, and, and so you need to teach your dog to think, to turn the head, to bite low. So I do that all on the leash to protect my dog of being kicked. I seen many times a very good dogs that get kicked and don't come back to bite as good as they, as they was and as they could be. And then the same on the head. I want a dog who lies down in front of a cattle or stands in front of a cattle, bite and stays there. I don't want dog running around, I don't want this dog, unless he needs to move around because the, the cattle want to get him. Uh, but 
unless that I want this dog to bite and stand calm, hold position, bite and stand calm and just win over the cat. And that I would treat on the leash too. And when you bring a young dog to the cattle with our leash, I think that this dog might put himself in trouble uh, because he's just too excited, they want to bite too much, they just bite whatever they, they can and can get kicked and, and can be, uh, it can have a bad experience. So I will have my dogs on leash at all times before uh, uh, um, until I see that this dog is ready and he's biting correct, he's thinking, he's calm, he's not jumping in the middle of the cattle and then I say okay now he's ready to be out of leash and I will chill with the same steers with all the controlled environment until I see that dog is ready to move to a different stock. Okay so you always want the the dog to bite low on the heel and not just any leg but the you know to to know when to bite yes, on the leg. Exactly. Do do you train the dog to, to bite anywhere you said on the head? Do you train anywhere when he needs to bite on the head or just No we want them to bite head when it's needed to bite head or, or nose or or some dogs would like to bite the front leg also that's not a problem that's not easy but some dogs that's it. Okay. But I think that's pretty much about the, the, the starting with the cattle dog. Okay. So guys, thank you for watching. If you guys have any more uh, questions, please write your comments uh, down below and we will try to, to answer that. And the next videos we'll be posting will be more now with the training dogs and we will start with sheep and then move on. Thank you very much.